What is up Empire Builders? Welcome to another video. In this video we are going to talk about another China bank failing. This just adds on and it really escalates the situation that's going on with other bank failures earlier this year with the recent findings with um, the CEO of uh, of HSBC being ousted and this mystery 400 to 675 uh, billion dollars that have been loaned by HSBC to the PBOC and then of course we've got Hong Kong now I noticed that a lot of channels are avoiding talking about Hong Kong and I get why um, it's probably an instant uh, demonetization so if this video gets demonetized then oh well it does uh, but I think it's a really important topic that needs to be discussed and I think a lot of people don't really know what's going on as with many things that go on internationally uh, in the United States, most people don't really know why, why they're doing it and what's going on. So let me recap this whole thing for you. This started out in June because there was a um, anti-extradition bill that was up for changes. It wasn't really up for changes, but Carrie Lam and people in mainland China were pushing to make changes. Now, they weren't supposed to touch this bill. They weren't supposed to make changes to this bill. And that's when the very first protest started. In the beginning, very peaceful, very nice, um, so nice. In fact, I remember a couple of reporters were talking about how they were blown away that the protesters were so nice. One of them ran up during a protest and put a helmet on him um, and then put like a vest or something on him to make sure that he was safe, right? I remember seeing that trending in my Twitter timeline. And what happened after that was really pivotal to where we are now. So that wasn't taken serious. And what the, the Hong Kong people realized is that Carrie Lam is not to be trusted. And the other people in their government is not to be trusted. And they felt that they were essentially, for lack of better words, sock puppets for mainland China. And this is very common. China tries to install their own set of people everywhere. Um, China's been at war with Tibet. They've killed, well, estimated millions of Tibetans. Well, they've gone missing and um, China is to blame. They tried to install their own Dalai Lama, which was rejected. Uh, China is consistently doing this with places that it thinks are its own, okay? We also see this happening with the China Sea. Uh, it's now at odds with Thailand, with Singapore, with Vietnam, I believe Malaysia and Indonesia now, because it's trying to claim rights over a section of the East China Sea, I believe it is, that is not essentially theirs, but they want it. <laughs> So here we are. It does it seem so far fetched now that this Hong Kong situation has blown out of proportion so much that it has. Now, the thing that the Hong Kong people know that we don't is that if they give in on this, if they let China win on this, there's no stopping it. And that is why a lot of these people have left mainland China to go to Hong Kong to have freedoms that they didn't have in China. Now, that's the simplest and most basic way to explain it. So they did not give in. So they asked for Carrie Lam's resignation and she didn't give it. And this happened, I believe this was to update you, this happened last Sunday into Monday morning. Um, and that's when we saw the drop in the CNY. It went, well, it dropped um, in worth. And so it rose in dollar value, meaning that the amount of US dollars to, um, to the CNY went up, okay? So it went over $7 and it's usually below seven. And so the market completely freaked out. And I talked about this in my last video. Originally, everybody thought this was because of the Hong Kong protests, but then a the, uh, couple days later, when the HSBC CEO was fired, then some truth started to come out and it's uh, it might be a deeper story than that. And this is really, I wanted to continue on that storyline because more information is now possible, but uh, more information is now available rather. But I wanted to catch you up on what's going on with Hong Kong. So both sides are not giving up and that's where it is right now. Things are obviously escalating. If you don't like violence, please look away because some of these clips might have something uh, that is gory. Here they are holding um, U.S. flags, basically standing, and and this is their way of saying we want democracy, we want freedom, which I thought was pretty interesting and pretty cool. You know, with as many problems going on in the U.S., people still look at it as this uh, reigning example of democracy and of freedom. So that was really cool. They've taken over the airport. Uh, all flights were canceled for today as well. Um, you see here, they've taken over completely the Hong Kong airport, and yeah, here's a better shot. All I did was come over to Hong Kong, hashtag by the way, on Twitter. So that's how you find a lot of stuff, crazy I know. Um, 
So here's a really great shot, uh, photo op for sure. Um, What's interesting too is there's some news organizations in China trying to frame this like representatives from the United States have gone over and are somehow fueling the protests. But if we look at the blatant police violence happening right here, beating innocent people, they shot a woman in the face with, I believe it's a, the pellet rounds that they're using. Um, these things can cause death, uh, severe injury, and this is not an over. Uh, this is this has nothing to do with the United States. Um, they're not weaponizing the people in any sort of way, giving them weapons. Um, in fact, I've actually seen a few PR stunts that would um, have me believe that it's possibly China that is um, staging different violent attacks on itself to um, maybe justify bringing this in. And this is a shot from just 49 minutes ago. This is going viral now. This is at the Shenzhen border um, and Hong Kong border. And this, I don't even know how many troops this is, but there's tanks, there's troops. And I forgot who this is that's actually um, in these vehicles. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can find it. I believe it's the... Uh, hold on. Let's see if I can search this out here. Bear with me. Gosh, you got some really bad... Let's just go to Hong Kong protests, huh? Um, got some really out of line tweets there that do not match what I'm trying to look for. Where is it? I don't know. There's there's a name for the, um, yeah, see, so here's the woman who got shot in the face, and the police said that there was no evidence of her getting shot in the face, so they're basically not going to investigate it, which means they're not going to do anything. So it's just a, an extension of a problem of a problem of a problem that's going on here. So we've had multiple different staged events. Um, we had mafia involved. We had Chinese mafia involved at one point. They were wearing white shirts and they were beating people on the subway. I don't know if you remember that from a couple weeks ago. I don't know. I think it was like the PFB is like four or five syllables. It, what it stands for is um, the agency of China that is is uh, tasked to basically deal with this type of situation. It was a CCN article, I think, or CCN post that I saw. It, it, I guess it doesn't really matter. I'm um, getting lost in my own thought here. Um, but what we've got is both sides are not backing down because Hong Kong knows that if they back down on this, they will lose the democracies they have. And Carrie Lam is not um, – she's not stepping down and China's not stepping down. So I don't see this going anywhere but worse. Now we've got serious military escalation. And this, I think, is something that really a lot of different areas of, around the world can rally around because this represents all of us. This represents every single country. And I hope what this does is this opens people's eyes to, I know that there's the rhetoric that people get in America about China, that China's this horrible, awful place, and all they're trying to do is go to nuclear war with us. And that was a variation of a story. I will say overall that uh, Chinese, the, the Chinese government and what they want is what they want. And when they want something, they're going to do almost anything they possibly can to get it. And they lie. They lie about their GDP. We've now covered this, I think, two or three times in different videos and articles uh, that we've covered. And it's, uh, yeah, this this situation is, um, is definitely not a good one. And this could be a black swan event, which uh, pivots us now into the next piece. Steve Eisman um, from The Big Short, he's the guy that was... I believe played by Steve Carell, which is what I almost just called him Steve Carell. Uh, but Steve Eisman was, I believe, played by Steve Carell in The Big Short, which is an infamous, infamous movie now. Um, but a Black Swan event is basically this trigger event that causes something global. And Hong Kong right now could be that. And Steve Eisman is saying that. He's saying that it could uh, potentially be a Black Swan. The 2009 financial crisis was a Black Swan. So here's the part I wanted to give you. I think the potential... I think the potential black swan, if there is a black swan right now, is what's happening in Hong Kong. Um, if things escalate even further in Hong Kong, that would be a real impact back on the global economy. And if you stack that on top of what's already going on with China, then it becomes even more concerning. So let's jump into that now. All right, we have the third now um, banking failure, I believe in less than a year. Because I covered, I can't remember the name of them now, but I covered, I believe, two others earlier this year. So, yeah, this is the third either by this year or since quarter four of 2018. Pretty interesting stuff. And I don't know how this is pronounced. It's either Bao Shang or Bo Shang, um, possibly. Okay, I 
uh, I mess up my Asian pronunciations a lot of times uh, with how they pronounce O, E, C, H, etc. Um, okay, bank failure starts domino effect. So uh, takeover of May was the first bank failure in over 20 years in a system that had come to believe that all financial institution all financial institutions were guaranteed government directed investment bank. Uh, I'm not, you know, I'm just going to skip over the names, okay? Last week further underscored the problem as big banks reduce loans to smaller institutions. So, article number one: South China Morning Post is usually pretty good about what they what they write, okay? Usually pretty unbiased. They they aren't a pro mainland China uh, news outlet. That that's the best way to put that. You have China's sovereign wealth funds takeover linked uh, Heng Feng Hen Feng Hen Feng. Henfang Bank in third case of nationalization since May. Okay, so basically they're investing in Henfang Bank to increase capital uh, adequacy ratio, improve its management, and enhance its operational capability. So, and I believe I shot a video talking about this before where I brought up the fact that if you travel like I do uh, and you go throughout other areas of Asia, you know, let's call, uh, let's say, Indonesia, Vietnam, Bali, uh, Singapore. What you always see, and it and it was it was actually it got to the point where it was concerning because I I traveled probably uh, once every couple months, and Hong uh, excuse me, and Singapore was one of the airports that I often go through, and it was very concerning to me just how much money Chinese people would spend. I would see almost every single one of them walking around with duty free. Not just like one little little tiny thing I picked up for the family. No, we're talking like two, three bottles of alcohol. I would see designer brand, you know, Gucci, Prada, uh, Louis Vuitton, you know, Mark Ford, some sort of designer duty free as well. Like they were spending thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars in the duty free. And you know, you follow these people around and you watch what they're doing. Like they have a wallet filled with plastic. They have all been, and I've been talking about this since at least November of last year. The fact that it's dangerous when you have a society that's living completely off of plastic, living off of this a delusion that the show will never end, that the good times will never stop rolling, and that uh, cheap money will just keep rolling in. Because that's, that's what happens from quantitative easing. See, when you keep printing money like China and the United States does, there's really nowhere to go. You can't keep that money, by the way. And that's the system that they've made. It is actually a really bad idea for all of us to be holding money right now. Because even if our dollar was strong against the Chinese currency, uh, and the different currencies in Asia is it wouldn't really matter because if their problem got big enough, it would affect our our situation over here. So we could be sitting over here completely sovereign, completely fine in the U.S. dollar. That would actually over time be affected. And the only reason why is because Chinese debt is so toxic and it's spread everywhere. They own land rights, water rights throughout Asia, Australia. They like look into what Chinese banks and the Chinese government owns. It is terrifying. They own a ton of real estate in California. They own a ton of real estate throughout the United States. They are everywhere. Everywhere you look, there's Chinese development happening in your city. Now, maybe not in rural America, but on the East Coast, West Coast, South Side, uh, yeah, it's happening, guys. It's happening. In New Zealand, it's happening. In Australia, it's happening. Throughout the rest of Asia, it's happening. And I don't know about Europe, so I can't speak about that, but we can assume it's happening. Um, in fact, I remember reporting on a deal that the, uh, I think it was the PBOC or the Chinese government was going to actually own a huge amount of land in South Africa because they were essentially making loans. So they were loaning out their bullshit currency uh, for assets and it, it, they would acquire the assets if the African government couldn't pay back the loan. You can look that one up if you care to look into that one deeper, but I'm pretty sure that Africa defaulted and China now owns a shitload of Africa, at least water rights and some land, because that's the deals they go for, which is smart. Like you, you got to give them some credit for the game that they're playing. They're they're handing out their toxic, uh, devalued bullshit paper currency, and in return, they're getting real assets. They're getting land. They're getting water rights. Uh, the stuff that actually matters, right? So if there was a reset tomorrow and all the currencies needed to revalue, guess who's still winning? The, the people who are winning are the people who own the stuff, right? Remember Monopoly? Remember that game? Yeah. Anyways. All right. So here we go. Um, third article I got for you. Valuations of the world's biggest banks 
sink to record lows as China's economic and debt pain spreads in trade wars aftermath. So China's got a really big problem on their hands right now because not only do we have the trade tariff uh, war going on, um, where yeah, I think there was another $300 billion two or three weeks ago that Trump put on in terms of um, tariffs. We've got the Hong Kong situation. We've got the third bank failing. we got HSBC looking like it was a lifeline to at least the PBOC getting cut off. That makes things way worse for China. That makes things way, 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 way worse. Okay, they had to re-peg their dollar, uh, their currency to 6.996. I don't know what it's sitting at today. Um, but overall, uh, this is not looking good. And this is exactly what people like me were talking about before when you can see the writing on the wall. You can see what mindless printing of money does. Now, the United States isn't as bad off as China. And I don't know what assets the United States has been acquiring for lending out its money, okay? Uh, outside of treasuries and bonds and th that data, I haven't really been able to find anything else, okay? I don't know if that's because it doesn't exist or maybe it's just not being talked about on the same level that that I'm able to find these deals with China. I, I don't know, but anyways, yeah. Uh, I'll link all this stuff uh, as I usually do underneath the video, but uh, it's very interesting times. What I would suggest is that if you don't have a plan already, you need to create a plan to ensure your sovereignty, to ensure that you preserve your purchasing power for yourself, for your family, and for anyone else that you care about, okay? Because the recession, whether or not it is as big as some people think it will, I tend to think it won't be that big because when everybody's waiting for it, it usually doesn't happen the same way. And right now you got literally everybody calling for a recession in 2020, even CFOs. Uh, so I don't think it's gonna happen quite that way. And it's not like we're in the same situation that we were before. That's a topic that I should probably save for another video, but just understand there's some data behind what I'm saying. I'm not just pulling that out and saying it to, for the sake of it. And uh, what I would suggest is that, you know, obviously you make your plan and you make your contingencies uh, because we don't really know where this is going to go. And this upcoming year, 2020, will really be the defining year. And so keep an eye on how the next quarter goes this year because a lot of this will, we'll be able to tell around Christmas time how things are really shaping up, okay? And, and then we'll be able to make some assumptions for 2020 based on that. But that's all I got for you, my friends. Uh, we reopened the Discord. It is completely free. First link in the description. Yes, you have to sign up with your name and email address. I do not spam you. I do not send you mindless bullshit. Instead, what I send you is we send you a daily email that's based on macro economy. Everybody loves it. It gets 20 to 30% open rates every single day, which would not be happening if people didn't absolutely love it. So you get access to that. You get access to some free reports and you get access to the Discord. So believe me when I say that for free, for just giving us your name and email, it is 200% worth it. And uh, there'll be the links that I referenced in the video underneath as well and some other stuff if you want to support us from a premium standpoint we do have premium offerings and uh, they're even better than the free stuff baby so check that out comment below with what you think if you're brand new to the channel subscribe hit the bell notification and if you want to show us some cheap support just hit the like button so cheap helps this video spread and get out into the YouTube algorithms and hopefully more people can get access to this valuable 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 information that uh, I want to get around. Okay, that's it. See you in the next video. Bye.